You know, there's some things in coding school that they tend to gloss over, and depending on your instructor, they may not have covered it at all, and you won't really find it in CPT. And one of them is something I'm going to cover today, which is the global period. Hey everyone, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. I've mentioned about global periods in some of my videos, and I did have some viewer feedback that not everyone understands what I refer to when I say a global period. So I thought it would be great today to do a brief overview of the global surgical package. If you want to know more about global surgery, you definitely want to read the Medicare Learning Network booklet on the Global Surgical Package. You can find it on the CMS website. I will link it below. So let's start out with what is a Global Surgical Package. Well, a Global Surgical Package is all your reasonable and necessary things that happen before, during, and after you having a surgical service. So things like performing the actual surgery and routine post-operative care, checking in on you for a determined appropriate amount of time after that surgery for routine follow-up. And that's all provided by the same surgeon or a surgeon working in the same surgical specialty or same group. So if you go to a general surgeon and they perform a surgery on you, someone else in that group can still technically follow up on you and it will be part of that global surgical package. So services are determined to have either a zero day, 10 day, or 90 day global period. So if it's something where you won't really need to follow up for any reason, something really minor, that would be designated as having a zero global day period, meaning that if you go in there post operatively, that will be billed out separately, potentially as a separate E&M service or whatever that extra service was that was provided. And then there's 10 day global period. So that's something that we often refer to as a minor surgery. Something like having a mole removed from your skin would typically have a 10 day global period because you're gonna have that surgery and you're gonna follow up within 10 days to do something minor like have those sutures removed or check to make sure that the uh, incision didn't get infected. And then your major surgeries like a knee replacement or a cholecystectomy tend to have a 90 day global period because you're gonna have a lot more follow-up care with that. And technically again, it's actually 92 days because there is one day pre-op, the day of the surgery, and then the 90 days following the surgery. Now with some months being 30 days and others being 31 and then the Operative day, sometimes it does get confusing as far as when does the global surgical period actually end. And a lot of Medicare contractors do have calculators that you can use. There's one that my Novatos carrier in my area has that you can just go in, plug in the date, and say that it's a 90 day global, and it'll tell you when the last day of that global surgical period is. The nice thing too about the Novatos calculator is it also gives the percentage of how much was preoperative care, how much was intraoperative care, and how much was postoperative care. Because sometimes a surgeon may just do the surgery only and have someone else do pre and post-op, or they might do pre and intra but not postoperative. And in that case, there are certain modifiers that you can put on that surgical code to get the appropriate payment for that percentage that that particular provider you're billing for did. So the 54 modifier is for the surgical care only. So that's when the provider only does the surgery itself. 55 is post-operative care only. So that's if the provider is just doing that routine post-operative care, checking your sutures, checking for infections, making sure that you're healing appropriately. And then 56 would be your pre-operative care only. So the pre-operative care leading up to that surgery. So what's included in that global surgical package? So all of the pre-op care after that decision for surgery is made. So say for example, you see a provider, they say, hey, you need to have a knee replacement. They've made that decision for surgery, but they also bring you back later on just to go over some paperwork, go over some routine surgical stuff. That's actually included already in the surgical package. That's not a separate E&M or an H&P. Once they've made that decision for surgery, them bringing you back for their convenience to include all kinds of paperwork or things they wanted you to sign, you know, that's part of that package. That's not separately billable. Now, if it is a minor procedure, like having intermediate sutures placed, that would include the preoperative visit on the day of surgery. 
It also includes all the intraoperative necessary stuff and then your postoperative, depending on if it's a minor, you have 10 days postoperative, major is 90 days postoperative, but all of your routine stuff and that actually includes complications that do not require a return to the OR. If you have to go back to the operating room, that would be something that you can bill out separately. But if it is just anything that is a routine kind of course of treatment of that 90 days for your major surgeries, or even just a complication that they can treat with a visit, not with a return to the OR, that's all included in the global surgical package. So all your routine follow-up appointments, things like pain management, or having your sutures removed, or putting a Band-Aid on, that's all included in that global surgical package. What's not included is in the case of major surgeries, that decision for surgery is not included. So that can be billed out with your appropriate evaluation and management code with a modifier 57 to designate that there was a decision for surgery. And that E&M with the 57 can only be billed for major surgical procedure decisions. And it also can't be billed out if there's already an established transfer of care to that provider. What's also not included is anything that is not related to that original surgery. So if they have a condition on a separate body part or you're also managing some sort of chronic condition not related to the surgery, that would be something that can be billed out separately because it's not part of the global surgical package. And then any separate diagnostic tests or procedures can be billed out separate as well. Now, I know I mentioned about the major surgeries and how the decision for surgery can be billed out separate. With minor surgeries, it's a little bit different. We have that 25 modifier that designates that there was a significant separately identifiable procedure done on the same date of service as an e &M. So that goes only on the e &M. I'm not gonna talk about that for the specifics of this video because I could go on for a whole half an hour just about 25 modifiers. So I hope this was a helpful overview of the Global Surgical Package. Again, check out that MLN booklet because that is an amazing resource. If you are interested in me doing a more comprehensive coverage of global surgeries and the Global Surgical Packages, I can do that, but that will likely then be a paid webinar. I usually don't charge too much for them, but if you have interest in this, let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get alerts when I post new episodes. I will see you in the next episode, and until then, just keep on coding on.